Ray. Riff, riff, wrong. Okay. Risk Progress is a part of Christian Reek Central Network. And Christian Reek Central Rock Wrong. Hey, Scoop. What are you doing, man? I don't know. I'm supposed to be reading an ad. All right. Hold on. Give me, give me it. Okay. <laughs> All right. This podcast is part of the Christian Geek Central Network at ChristianGeekCentral.com. Cartoons. The Animated Frontier. These are the voyages of the Cellcast podcast. Its continuing mission to explore strange new cartoons, to seek out new animation styles and new creative storytelling methods, to boldly go where so few ever go again. Welcome to another episode of The Cellcast. The animated series. Joining me today is a man who time just seems to go by very, very fast. Welcome, Jacob. <laughs> Why, thank you. I'd like to introduce our co-host, a man that just has to live life to the fullest. <laughs> Welcome, Drew. Well, when you got such a short time to live. Yeah. How are you doing, Jacob? Man, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, yeah. Pretty good. Things get a little funky every once in a while, but... It happens to the best of us. Exactly. So today we are reviewing Thundercats 2011 Season 1, Episode 4, The Song of the Pedalars, which was directed by Yasuhiro Geshi and Sean Song, and was written by J.M. De, De Mate- Mateus. At one point in the episode, Jitaro says, as the ancient Thundarian philosopher said, time is relative. In reality... It was Albert Einstein, Albert Einstein who said that time is relative. This is the first episode which Panthro actually appears. Yes. As his previous appearance, while still voiced by that guy, is not actually him. No, it actually is Mumra. Well, well it is Mumra. It was Mumra. It was Mumra. Mumra. <laughs> All right, to go into our summary, as the lizards keep... Drawing closer and closer to our feline, our feline heroes, Lion-O questions if they're fighting a losing battle. When they see a small group of Armada catching up, they hide in a thorn bush forest where they meet the peddlers. Meet the peddlers. And these are a weird bunch of people. That they are. Because they live and die in a single day. Yeah. Which means when they say they've been there for generations, that literally could be a week. It could be. Quite literally. So what did you think about this episode? Well, my first thought when our, we get our first glance at the Pedalars was, Oh look, it's the Who's down in Whoville that the Grinch hates. They're even singing their song. ba who do re spa No, they're not really singing that song. It's, Close. A, it's a more generic thing, mm. but... You can't help and look at that and go, and oh look, that's that's uh they're singing to that uh baby like it's the giant Christmas tree in the middle of Whoville. True. <laughs> uh, this is an interesting episode considering we do follow one character of these pedalars mm-hmm. n- from his childhood to adulthood. We don't actually, I don't think that's him in the very beginning, in the baby form. Oh, it is. It's him. I, I wasn't sure because the when they're explaining the time is relative thing, mm-hmm. and she and Chitara points out that this ba- this toddler was just a baby a couple hours ago. I figured that was that kid because that kid. That it's is hard possible. to it is hard to tell exactly if this kid was there or not. I think he was. In my mind, he was at least three or four hours old by the time they showed up. Yeah, that's just my thought okay. on the matter. Um, one thing I don't like is since they, all of the, uh, pedalars kind of have like maybe six to seven designs per age against the whole, Mm -hmm. you know, population that we see, uh, they all kind of look the same. And this includes Emmerich. True. Because there is a shot at the very (laughs) end as they are 
uh, finally, as the, as the pedalars are escaping, mm-hmm. where the camera happens to hold on one of these pedalars that looks a lot like Emric, despite the fact we just saw him die mm. <laughs> from old age. Yes. And I kept thinking, because the only thing that really separated Emric in all his forms from we first see him to when he dies is that he's got those two little marks that kind of make him look like he has a mustache. Yes. None of the other peddlers we see have that, but their general facial structures and their foliage, for lack of a better term, mm-hmm. uh, there's like maybe seven per age group, and they just copy and pasted that mm-hmm. over and over again. Yeah. And it's, it, it's, I recognize that this is a show for Cartoon Network where, you know, they had a limited budget. They couldn't. For one episode, they couldn't have 50 different designs. And for yeah. the most part, it's fine. It's just, maybe, I guess what's really annoys me is the fact that they, it felt like they decided to, they, they were going to have the happy ending where the guy got to go to the garden with everybody else, but then they decided the last minute, no, we need to have him die at the end. Yeah. And we don't have time to re-edit this one scene, so we're just going to make sure that one doesn't have its little mustache uh, <laughs> markings on it. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, but I can still tell it's Emmerich. <laughs> Except that can't be Emmerich. We just saw him die. Oh, but... Uh, yeah. And for the most part, I mean, you got the time travel thing and where every time we they need Emmerich to advance in age, he yeah. always is conveniently off screen so yeah. we, they don't have to show the slow transition. Yeah. Or they can say this transition was slow enough that it didn't affect any either way. Yeah. Um, I I kind of wish we got a few more transitionary scenes because it's just it felt like he's toddler, not toddler, but he's a young boy. Mm-hmm. Then he's a teenager. Then he's a young adult, mm-hmm. and then he's old. Yeah. And that's all we see of this guy. And admittedly, they had to do a day in thirty min- in 23 minutes. Yeah. So there's going to be some time jumping, but it's just like, I, I just did not feel the emotional growth or the, the emotional hold that yeah. would give me the same type of uh, reaction that the Thundercats all seem to have for this kid when he yeah. find, when he dies of old age. Yeah. Uh, that being said, the lesson he teaches Lionel though is uh, a very smart one because Lionel throughout the whole episode is he's getting depressed. Is mm. the best way I know how to put. It. He's wondering is hope is hope just an illusion? Is there any way we can defeat these enemies? I mean, so far in each of the f- four episodes we've seen so far, we've seen. Technology is great, Lionel. And then, I'm the hero of ages, Lionel. I'm the hero of ages, Lionel. And then, uh, I must have revenge for the death of my father, Lionel. And now, is there any way? Are we ever going to win this war, Lionel? Like, Lionel, you've been on the road for two days. Calm down. It's. Admittedly, Lionel probably did need to have the message that it doesn't matter if you win or lose. It's that you uh, that you never give up hope. Yeah. Because even if it appears that you fail, you might actually be succeeding without realizing yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, because admittedly, Lionel does have a long, long journey ahead of him, and he apparently is the only uh, Thundercat so far that has any emotional change between episodes. True. Chitara is still the same person. Tigra still is a pain in the patuki for Lionel right. because it, he's, al- he's always got to be the opposite of Lionel. Right. So, I mean, he gets a little bit of change, but it's because Lionel changed. And then you just, and then you got Wily Kit and Wily Cat who are just kids. Yeah. They're the comic relief. They're the comic relief. It's like, oh, you kissed the frug. You love the frug. You dared me to kiss the, the frug. frug. Thinking, well, at <laughs> least that. he didn't turn into a cat prince thing. 
<laughs> that would be weird. Yeah. I thought it was a very, I thought that was very interesting. They did that. Uh, definitely in the relationship between, uh, Lion-O and Emmerich mm-hmm. was like, it's, it's so well done. It's so well done. Be like, you do get to see Emmerich's growth as a character and his, you know, his, from his, you know, from his wee years up to his death right. within a single day, like you said before, um, but then you get the flashback on across his whole life at the end. It's like, we just watched all this. <laughs> I know what you're doing, but I do not care about this character. So the flashback does nothing for me. Right. I just watched all this footage 15 minutes ago. One of the scenes that you showed that was literally the scene right before the flashback started. Uh, right. It's like... <laughs> You know, if you were doing this for comedic purposes, it would be funny. But I can tell you're not. You're trying to elicit an emotional response mm-hmm. out of the audience. And I, I just don't get it. Anyway, sorry. Right. Um, and in that, with uh, Enric's death, it does uh, motivate Lino to, like like you said before, the fact be like, like even though everything seems hopeless mm-hmm. and... Like we see this massive growth of uh, of Lionel's determination, where mm-hmm. we go into the uh, what are they called again? Pedalars. Pedalars. We we uh, when we see Lionel go into the the world of the Pedalars, and he is just down the dumps to be like, and from his perspective and also from our perspective, yeah, things do seem a little of like we're bleak. Bleak. Exactly. That's a good word. Bleak. And when uh when we go through the journey of Emmerich from wee little lad to his death mm-hmm. and that motivates Lino to, like you said before, with, you know, not giving up that even though things may be bleak, there is still hope. And uh, and then we finally get the full animated sequence of him, you know, the uh, doing thunder, the Thundercats. Yeah, the Thundercats thing, and uh, I just love that to death. And the fact to be like, even in that, be like, oh crap, we're gonna lose. Then all of a sudden, this big enormous machine comes rolling in yes. and takes all things out. Now, if you were not a fan, if you hadn't watched Thundercats before, you're like. Huh? What in the world is this? And then you meet this mysterious character, and it's Panthro. Wait, didn't you? Weren't you Mumra before? No, this is the real didn't, Panthro. Didn't you? Weren't you? Didn't they say you died? Yeah. Oh, I guess not. In reality, I actually my thought was because I kind of knew what it was. Because it's like, oh look, that's it's a car that looks like a cat. Gee, I wonder what that is. <laughs> <laughs> but my thought was when he kind of was doing that drift into the lizards there. Yeah. And you can see that he's got tail lights, and I'm thinking, why does the thunder tank have the tail lights? <laughs> Is he going to signal to the the lizards that he's about to make a left turn? <laughs> I'm that he's breaking. Turn? Yeah, it's like you don't have headlights, but you have tail lights. That makes a lot of sense. Well, technically, the the eyes. I guess the, the eyes are headlights, but they're, they're not headlights. pointing forward. <laughs> They didn't light up anybody. It's just no. they were there. It's like, okay. <laughs> it looked more like where it should have been like the cab than where the headlights should be is all right. I'm saying. Anyway, it's, in many ways, I almost feel like it would it would have been better served mm-hmm. had he shown up in the very next episode and have this episode end on a bit of a cliffhanger. It's like, how are the Thundercats going to get out of this one? Yeah. Join us next week and you find out. Yeah. I feel like that would have been better served. Yeah, I would, this, agree, I would agree with you on that. But at the same time, you do get this. And it's like, you know, that's fine. Yeah. But we do get, like I said in the trivia, this is the first real appearance of Panthro. And uh, yeah, that ends our episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I love the, uh, the, the relationship between Emmerich and Lino and how that uh, spurs Lino on to uh, uh, go forward where obviously at the beginning of the episode, he was just be like, you know, what, what is the point of us, you know, continuing on? Cause apparently now he didn't, he didn't care about the revenge anymore. No. Well, I guess he did kind of give up the revenge thing last episode. Yeah, he did. And now he was, maybe he's been searching for a reason to fight since that point. Yeah. But 
And so, you know, be like, well, we got to look for the Book of Omens, but I got to find the motivation to go forward. Well, he's, he's kind of he's kind of lost in his, his to, own. To put it in perspective, the thing the Pedalars think is going to save them is this Cliff of Winds. Yeah. And they've got a map that will show them how to get there. But when they get to where the map says it is, mm-hmm. there's nothing there. So I think what this is, but they still have not given up hope. Right. It is exactly what Lionel I think is scared of that they may find a book of omens yeah. or a book that claims to be the book of omens, and they don't know if that book is actually going to be helpful or not. It could be they go to all this trouble and it doesn't help them. Mm-hmm. And Lionel needed to learn it's like it doesn't matter if the book of omens is our best bet it doesn't matter if the book of omens actually can help or not because who knows what we will learn along the way Mm -hmm. maybe on the journey uh we'll fight back enough of mumra's forces that will weaken him enough that you know whether or not we have the book or not it will help i think of course the way the show is going to go the book of omens is actually our deus ex machina that's going to save the day at the end of the show but Especially with the Sword of Omens next next to it, but mm-hmm. at the same time, there's a part of me that re- thinks back to Kung Fu Panda trying to get the Dragon Scroll, and all the Dragon Scroll is is a mirror. Hmm, that's right. So, and yeah, there's a part of me thinking maybe it's going to be like that, but mm-hmm. I don't think that's how it's going to go because that doesn't fit the standard st- way of storytelling they were going for on this one. But anyway, very true. Well, that was a good episode. It was a very yeah. good episode. Um, what is the next episode we're doing? Old friends. Old friends, of course. So stay tuned for that one. Come, Jacob. We must prepare for next week. Prepare for what, Drew? The same thing we do every week, Jacob. Record a podcast. Oh boy. So where can they find you, Jacob? They can find me on Facebook at Jacob B. Heron and Jacob's Daily Art Corner, my personal art Facebook page. On Twitter at Jacob B. Heron, on Instagram at Jacob B. Heron, and on Letterbox at Jacob Heron. Where can they find you, Drew? Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Drew Dodgen. You can also find my Facebook page at Drew's Photo Bin, where I upload uh, my photography. You can also follow me on Letterbox at GGeorge759 and Twitter at GGeorge759. Where can they find us, Jacob? You can also visit our website, the Cellcast dot podbean.com where you will find every episode we released and links to listen to it on apple podcast google play and stitcher our rss feed if we aren't in your favorite podcast app directory please share review and subscribe to us there and share us with your friends you will also find a link to our facebook group the double feature podcast community where we talk about both animated and live-action movies. We share this with our other podcasts, which we do with Jacob's brother Jim, at uh, the Movie of the Week podcast, where we talk about live-action movies. You can also email us at thecellcastpodcast at gmail.com. Also, please like our page on Facebook. We try to post about upcoming movies. If you comment on that movie's post before we record, we'll read your comments in the episode. And remember, every time we say the cell cast, that is with a single L. L.